endoscopic dacryocystorhinostomy, DCR. Let's first look at what tears are for. Tears are produced con continuously by the tear gland under the upper eyelid. Tears are spread evenly across the eyes each time we blink and are essential for clear vision and comfort of the eyes. They wash away dirt and germs. Where do they drain? Our tears drain away from the eyes through tiny holes called puncta in the upper and lower eyelids. Then, then they enter little canals called canaliculi, which join and enter the tear sac, also called the lacrimal sac, where they flow down a duct to the nasolacrimal duct into your nose. This is why our noses run when we cry. So why do people get watery eyes? Well, eye watering may be due to extra ear tear production, which is normal when we cry. Watering also happens when the tear drains can't keep up with tear production. This is why our eyes are water in cold, windy conditions. The tears may stay on the eye, causing watery vision, or they may spill over the lids. Watering can have many causes, and this podcast will only discuss the tear drainage problems. What problems can cause watery eyes? Watery eyes can be caused by blockage in the drainage system, but we often cannot tell what has caused the blockage. Infection is a common reason, though. When blockage is caused by an injury or previous surgery, there is usually a clear story to connect the two events. Can the tear drains be unblocked? The short answer is usually not, but if so, it's only temporarily. However, the blockage can often be bypassed surgically. The most common bypass operation is called a dacryocystorhinostomy, or DCR, which means tear sac to nose connection. Why do you need the DCR operation? Well, you most likely will have been suffering from a watery eye and possibly repeated eye infections or sticky discharge and sometimes a painful infection of the tear sac that forms a lump between your eye and your nose, which is called a dacryocystitis. Your eye surgeon or doctor will have referred you because you have a blocked tear drain. Well, are there any alternatives to DCR? Well, I mean, the first option is to cope with the watering and hope the infection's clear with antibiotics. Sometimes the blockage can be overcome with a blunt, pro blunt probe like a pipe cleaner, but it tends to re-block. To discourage this from happening, small rubber tubes are sometimes left in place for a couple of months, but they often re-block when we take them out. There are different types of DCR. The traditional option is performed from the outside, usually by an eye surgeon, through a small cut in the skin between the inner corner of the eye and the nose. This operation has the best success rate, between 70 and 95%, depending on where the blockage is. But it can leave a small, sometimes visible scar. More recently, the DCR can be done through the nose by a nose or ENT surgeon, leaving no external scar. At present, this operation has slightly less success rate, between 60 and 90%, depending on the position of the blockage, but you will be left with no visible scar. This is the operation you have been listed for. What will happen before the operation? Well, you'll be asked to attend a preoperative assessment clinic before your surgery. This is to assess your fitness for anaesthetic and for surgery. Here we do some swabs checking for infection and request any necessary tests, for example, an X-ray, ECG or blood tests. The ENT surgeon will discuss the operation with you in detail, including any risks and benefits that you will be asked to sign a consent form for. You will be given antibiotic drops and possibly capsules or tablets to keep germs away during healing. And you will be asked to wash away any stickiness from the eye gently with cotton wool and cooled boiled water. On the day of your operation you will come into the freedom unit in the morning and your surgeon will go through the operation one last time 
and you will be asked to wait in the waiting room until you are called for your operation. Your surgery will be carried out under general anaesthetic, meaning you will be asleep during the operation. You will be asked to stop eating and drinking from midnight on the day of your operation. Your ophthalmic or eye surgeon has referred you to have an endoscopic DCR. This is an operation done jointly by the ear, nose and throat ENT surgeon and the ophthalmic surgeon. The operation is carried out using a fine telescope through the nose. A new connection is made between the tear sac and the inside of the nose. A very fine, clear rubber tube may be placed in the tear duct from the corner of the inner eye where it is just visible with the ends emerging inside the nose. This tube is left in place for a variable period, usually 6 to 12 weeks, while healing takes place and is then removed. The ENT surgeon may occasionally use a dressing inside the nose, a nasal pack, at the end of the operation to avoid a nosebleed. What happens after the operation? The operation is usually done as a day case, so you should be able to go home the same day. The nasal packs are dissolvable and you will be asked to use a salt water spray to help break it down. If you have been given any medication, you should follow the instructions you have been given, which will also be found on the packet. After the operation, you should not blow your nose for the first two weeks. The operation has connected your tear sac to the lining of your nose. If you blow your nose, you will blow air and germs into the operation wound, and this can cause an infection. You should not rub your eye. A fine silicone rubber tube is sometimes left in the tear ducts to splint them. This joins the inner part of the upper lid to the lower lid. If rubbed, the tube may accidentally come out. You should take the treatment you've been given. You will be given antibiotic drops and possibly capsules or tablets to keep germs away during healing. Please use them as instructed. You should wash away any stickiness from your eye gently with cotton wool and cool boiled water. Your doctor may give you a spray for the nose to help with your breathing. Please use this as instructed. Patients are usually advised to take two weeks of rest following their operation. There are some possible complications with the surgery, as with any other surgery. And I'm going to tell you about the common and rare but serious complications of this particular procedure. It is very common for the nose to feel blocked after surgery, and this is due to swelling of the lining of the nose. It could also be due to the dissolvable packs that we leave in place to help the nose to heal. Bleeding is usually controlled during surgery or with the packs, but can occasionally happen afterwards. There are two very serious but very rare complications that can happen. One of these is bleeding into the eye socket or orbit to damage the muscles that move the eye. This can affect the vision, but the chances of this happening are very low. If this happens, an operation to relieve the pressure on the eye may be needed. The operation is also very close to the bone at the base of the brain. There is a small risk of leakage of the fluid from the space around the brain. If this rare complication happens, you will need to stay in hospital until the leak stops and another operation to stop the leak may be needed. Will the operation cure your symptoms? DCR operations are not very common, however the success rate is high and hopefully your symptoms will be cured. If a tube has been left in place, the eye may continue to water until this has been removed. The operation is unsuccessful in about 10 to 30 percent and successful in 70 to 90 percent. If the watering of the eye continues, another operation may be required.
If you have any other questions, your ENT surgeon or nurse will be happy to answer any of the questions you have.